Welcome to this week's W2O 11 weather impact. I'm meteorologist Matt Willoughby and this week we're breaking down all things hurricane and a very specific topic we are talking about is exactly why do hurricanes, uh, tropical cyclones are getting stronger and why are they getting stronger over the years? Well, to break down that first, we have to explain to you at least the different categories we do see within a hurricane and what you can expect either from category one to category five hurricane and some of those characteristics that you do see in that. So for that, we got to lay out at least a diagram for you and at least show you exactly what that can exactly look like. And we have our diagram right here for you. So a category one hurricane, typically you see some gusty winds and likely some small storm surge really not impactful as what we used to see but you go from a category one to category two that's when we really start to see those stronger winds likely a 74 to 95 plus mile per hour wind gust and you really start to see that storm surge come on to shore but then one of the more major categories we talk about is the category three hurricane that's when it really starts to get serious and you can even see storm surge up to five to nine feet and you see some of those trees blowing in the distance yeah that's when we really start to see those strong winds over 100 miles per hour, but you get into category four. This is when we really start to see those gusty winds that you're seeing right now and likely those strong, strong wind gusts in category five the most serious one and strongest one. This is when you could really see a house almost removed from its foundation and that storm surge likely anywhere from 15 to 20 feet. So this is one of the more serious ones we talk about and dangerous as well as those winds that rain whips around our area as you go throughout a category five hurricane. So with that, yeah, we're gonna break that down and pretty much explain to you why exactly are they getting stronger? Well, it all has to do with those warmer climates and warmer conditions. We we are seeing at least over the past 60 to 70 years. So with that, those warmer waters mean more fuel for those hurricanes and likely heavier rain and even higher storm surge when it does come to those storms and hurricanes. So we could break this down a little bit more for you. The Gulf of Mexico specifically, when we talk about those warming oceans, that means impacts to hurricanes, only also water quality, but remaining ecosystems as well is really the thing we talk about when we talk about those warming oceans. And as it continues to warm, we'll likely see more rapid intensification with those hurricanes as we go throughout the years to come. So we talk about ocean heating up across the entire world. Well, we've seen about a two to three, three increase with those ocean waters, and that may not seem uh, much, but if you uh, at least total that up over the last hundred and almost 20 years, that really is a lot when it comes to warming oceans. So we're already above average almost across the entire area when it comes to sea surface temperatures being above average and those increasing. So this past year or this past week, we've already still seen temperatures into the 80s, even mid 80s. And keep in mind, it is October right now, and we're seeing sea surface temperatures still into the mid 80s throughout the Gulf of Mexico, which is still primed for some strong development within tropical cyclones. We can break this down even more throughout the year. So far this year, you can really see that line right there for 2024. We've seen above average temperatures when it comes to sea surface temperatures across the world. And even 2021 was a record year where we saw pretty much every year before that below that. But this year and last year, we've seen record amounts of warming across those sea surface temperatures across the globe. As you look at Hurricane Milton, though, we talk about rapid intensification. Well, with the Gulf of Mexico being still so warm in the month of October, it underwent rapid intensification. One of the fastest ones to do this that we've ever seen in our lifetime. Just around Monday at 2 a.m., it was a Category 1 hurricane. It went from Category 1 to Category 2 in just three hours and likely two hours later, it was a category three hurricane. It didn't stop there though. As we went throughout at least a Monday around 9.15, category four hurricane. And just before 12 p.m., it was a category five hurricane. So in less than 24 hours, this hurricane went from a category one to category five strength, and that is all due to those warm waters and rapid intensification. As you look at at least temperatures and carbon dioxide, they pretty much coincide with each other the last few years. This is not really a good thing for us when we talk about carbon dioxide and also temperatures. This really lines up perfectly almost when we talk about those warmer temperatures and also carbon dioxide, which really hurts our earth out there as you go throughout 
pretty much the last several years. So with that, you can pretty much coincide that together and also really understand that if we have more carbon dioxide, then we'll have more ocean acidity out there as well. So if we dissolve carbon dioxide, then that means less acidic waters and also less warmer waters out there, which really hurt that hurricane development and tropical storm development. So that's one thing we really do talk about when there is tropical development. One of the things we can do to, for some solutions to clean energy, or we can have zero emission vehicles. That will really help with at least that carbon dioxide and also battery electric cars will really help with that as well. When we talk about clean alternatives to vehicles, that fossil fuel, that will decrease those fossil fuel amounts that we do let out in the atmosphere and hopefully bring down those global emissions we do see every day. Also, wind power. That is one of the things when we talk about electric electricity, at least electric power makes up about 25% of U.S. emissions. But if we use wind turbines, that will really help us save on electricity and also those emissions that we continue to let up into the atmosphere. So these are a few things that why are those storms and tropical storms getting stronger and stronger? And some of the solutions we can use as we go throughout the next 50, 100, even 150 years that will have to be at least implemented to save our Earth and at least save us from those stronger tropical cyclones. This has been this week's W211 Weather Impact. I'm meteorologist Matt Willoughby. Thanks for watching.